Hey everyone, it's Jolt. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the behind the scenes exploration of the periodic table of productivity inspired by Ali Abdal's Feel Good Productivity. If you haven't seen my previous video on this, be sure to check it out for context. We're going to cover a lot of ground today, so buckle up. We'll look at how I've connected the ideas in Ollie's book with other ideas in my Obsidian Vault. We'll explore how I've applied the concept of the compass of Zettelkasten for creating these connections. We'll talk about the concept of 4D personal knowledge management, in short, 4D PKM, and how I use Obsidian MD plus the Excoli Draw and Excoli Brain plugins as my 4D PKM system, and a whole lot more. I've dedicated videos on many of the topics we'll touch on. You'll find the links in the video description. This video is a live demonstration of the mindset, the PKM approach I've developed over the past 20 plus years. My hope is that by the end of this video, you'll agree with me that the mindset is one of the most effective approaches to learning and connecting your ideas. Let's dive in. I use Obsidian MD and the Excolidro plugin as my primary thinking tools. Let's start by opening the Excolidro drawing with the periodic table. Now, what might not be immediately obvious from this periodic table is how each of the tiles or experiments following Ollie's terminology from the book is a separate document that is linked to other notes in my vault. I have over 10,000 notes in Obsidian, each heavily connected to other notes in my vault. Obsidian calls the folder that contains all my markdown documents a vault, where each document is a note. In reality, a vault is just a folder on my PC, and Excolidro drawings are also stored in Markdown files, which makes them super versatile, as you'll see in a second. Let's start by opening the Choose Your Character tile. I can do that by control clicking on the image. I could edit the tile now, but that is not what I want to show you. Remember I mentioned that Excolidro drawings are stored in Markdown nodes? This means that you can open an Excolidro file in two modes. The Excolidro view mode, when the drawing is editable, and the Markdown view mode. You can think of this as flipping a sheet of paper. On one side of the paper you have the drawing, on the back side of the paper you have your notes about the drawing. Let's now flip the drawing by clicking to open it in Markdown view mode. This is where I store my interconnected references. Let's quickly look at them one by one. I could spend hours just on this set of references because these connections are so rich, but today we're going to move quickly. First up is my reference to the concept of self-veiling from James P. Carse's Finite and Infinite Games. The point Carse highlights in his book is how playing roles is relevant to every situation. Imagine an actress playing her part, let's say Ophelia in a Shakespeare play. Now consider that at the end of the play she meets her audience and afterward goes home to her children. It is easy to understand that when she steps off the stage, she leaves behind one role, the role of Ophelia, to take on another role, the role of the actress. And when she goes home, she takes on the role of a mother. She has many other roles as well, the role of a wife, daughter, maybe sister and citizen and so on. Choosing our roles deliberately for the task at hand, as Ali suggests, is not such a foreign idea, after all. I could talk about this for hours. If you're interested in my book on a page summary of Carse's book, you'll find the link in the description. 
My next association is how the idea of learning to act in the nature of a character is similar to the ability of speaking in the voice of the author. The idea of speaking in the author's voice is mentioned in The Art of Close Reading, a short essay I highly recommend reading for anyone interested in learning and books. However, you might be tempted to play characters that do not come naturally. Strength Finder by Gollop is an interesting assessment that led me to eventually start this YouTube channel. The idea behind Strength Finder is to understand your natural strengths, the roles you prefer playing, and instead of working on roles you are not drawn to, capitalize on those that you naturally perform. To some extent, this idea contradicts or challenges Ali's idea of choosing our character. Thinking about personalities reminded me of the PKM personalities by Nick Milo and Tiago Forte. I won't go into implications now, but I think this is a very interesting aspect to consider as well. Some concepts that supercharge the idea of choosing your character are the idea that imitation is a powerful approach for achieving outstanding results. This is why I connected Ollie's idea to my visual note on the secrets of extraordinary achievement from my notes on Decoding Greatness by Ron Friedman. By now you might be wondering about these tags, or rather data view fields, at the beginning of each reference. On a side note, data view is another essential Obsidian plugin which we will not dive into today. Earlier I introduced the compass of Zettelkasten, a concept I learned about from Vicky Zhao and Failing Cheng at the Linking Your Thinking conference. This compass is a powerful tool for organizing your thoughts, guiding you in different directions, north, south, west, and east. In our exploration today, we are leveraging this concept in the context of the periodic table of productivity. These fields, implements similar to challenges, reminds me of supercharges, follow the compass of Zettelkasten creating a structured framework, or you could call an ontology, for understanding and connecting ideas. If you're new to this concept, it's about looking at your ideas from various perspectives. Looking north explores the origins and bigger categories, while south identifies instances or examples. West delves into similar and supporting ideas, and East looks for ideas that compete with the central concept. As you can see, I have categorized my field names based on the directions of the compass. Now let's connect these references visually with Excalibrain. Choose your character is now at the center. See how each of the links is positioned north, south, west and east, mirroring the compass of Zettelkasten. If I hover over each element in Excolibrain, it will bring up a preview of each of the connected ideas. To the north, we find the periodic table, my literature notes, and the idea of playing roles, because I consider choosing my character as an implementation of that concept. To the west, I have the ideas that are in some way similar, speaking in the author's voice, and the PKM personalities by Nick Milo and Tiago Forte. And to the east are ideas that either challenge or supercharge Ollie's idea in the book. These are the benefits of imitation from the extended mind, reverse engineering from decoding greatness, and my personality assessments from Strength Finder and Myers Briggs. Finally, to the south, you can see each of the illustrations. Now, if I click on the periodic table of productivity, I will be taken back to the periodic table. Under the periodic table, you will see the 52 tiles linked to the south, or as children using the Excolibrain terminology. 
let's click on Embrace Your Curiosity. As you are now familiar with the Idea Compass, you can see I have connected ideas all around this style in all directions. A hidden value of the compass of Zettelkasten is when I don't see ideas in one or another direction, I know I'm likely biased. Most often what happens is missing an idea to the east, the ideas that contradict or challenge the idea at the center. But the final bit I wanted to show you today is how I applied the idea integration board concept. See references in the description below to explore all the various instances of curiosity in my Obsidian Vault. I connect these ideas by way of referencing the same icon in each of these instances. And by the way, the small numbers you see at the connector points called gates are the number of connections in a given direction. This helps me see how busy each direction will be. The bit I want to show you is the idea integration board. Simply put, the idea integration board is a visual board where I explore the various concept illustrations where I used a given icon, curiosity in this case, and shows the relationship between these. My theory behind this is that we are sometimes unconsciously drawn to the same visual representation for ideas that by default we would not connect in our minds. It is often that I find unexpected but meaningful connections between ideas while building and exploring these idea integration boards. It's fascinating to see how curiosity is the differentiator between leaders and followers, how curiosity acts as our filter for ideas, how it is a source of motivation, and how it is linked to our deepest desire of seeking truth. In closing, let's explore a fundamental truth. Lasting change requires a mental shift and internalization of ideas. The mindset for DPKM excels at making concepts a part of our mental landscape, facilitating internalization and leading to lasting change. This tool is more than a catalyst for transformation. It bridges the gap between concept and application, enhancing your ability to summarize, problem solve and see the big picture. As you embark on your learning journey, remember it's about making knowledge a part of who you are. Our exploration of 4D thinking in Obsidian concludes here today. If you found this insightful, hit the like button and share your thoughts in the comments. But before we wrap up, a reminder about the Visual Thinking Workshop, a transformative journey into these tools and concepts. Whether you're a seasoned practitioner or just starting, this workshop will help revolutionize how you process and connect visual ideas. Details are in the description below. Your journey to mastering visual thinking and 4D PKM begins with the Visual Thinking Workshop. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.